Hi, everyone. I see some familiar names and faces um, to all the students who have joined us earlier for some of our earlier AC Day One programming. Welcome again. And to some familiar, or sorry, new faces and names, welcome. Um, thank you so much for tuning in on a Tuesday, should I say afternoon, late, early, early evening. And um, we have some very special guests joining us for this session here. This is the AC Day One Pure Kitchen Cooking Class. And thank you so much for participating in any of the earlier sessions that you were able to join in. For those of you who I haven't met virtually yet, my name is Bonnie and I'm the Special Events Officer here at Algonquin. Now, before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. It would be great if everyone could ensure that your mic is muted. And it looks like mostly everyone is, so that's perfect. We do encourage you to keep your cameras on because we love to connect with you. We want to you to connect with each other. So um, make sure to turn those cameras on if you're able to do so. And before we start off um, over with Pure Kitchen, we have a fun little activity that we would like to invite everyone to participate in. So if you haven't done so already, oh, and I would like to mention as well, this session is closed captioning, closed caption. So if you do need that, the button is down there, uh, I believe below on your right hand side there and then if you look to your left there is the chat box so feel free to open the chat box right now I'm going to be asking everyone a fun question and um, we're all going to wait and submit our answers at the same time and once our answers are submitted our special guest Laura Stanbra our VP of student services will be picking at random two winners so let, I'll give it a couple of seconds for everyone to find their chat box and open it up there And I do see that most of us are ready. The question for you today is, what is your favorite restaurant? Don't send the response yet, just type it in the chat box there. What is your favorite restaurant? And it can be anywhere. It can be in Ottawa, it can be in Toronto, it can be abroad. So I'll give it a couple of seconds for everyone to type in their response. And the two gift cards today are for Connections, our campus store. So make sure you submit your answer in there if you want a chance at that gift card. So on the count of three, we're all gonna submit our answers at the same time, ready? One, two, three, sent. Ooh, I haven't heard of a few of these places. Oh, and one person said Pure Kitchen, duh. I would have to agree, Pure Kitchen is up there. <laughs> Lots of pure kitchens. <laughs> Maple Court, the Jane. Oh, that one's in Belgium. The Heirloom in Almonds. I'm gonna have to Google some of these places later because um, I haven't heard of a few of these places. So I'm looking forward to trying. Perfect. Awesome. So thank you everyone for sharing your answers. And as mentioned, we are joined by Laura Stambra, our VP of Student Services, and she has chosen two winners at random. So Laura, I'm going to um, pass it over to you for your introduction and the announcement of our winners. Thanks so much. I was enjoying re reading those as well. And, uh, and I was just saying a little earlier, it's a perfect time of day to do this, but I'm hungry reading all of this. And I'm sure I'm going to get hungrier uh, with the co cooking. So um, won't take too long. Just want to say a really warm welcome to you for those students who are returning. Welcome back. For those of you who are new, uh, welcome to the Algonquin family. It's great to have you. Um, you know, I, we know you have a lot of choices and we thank you for choosing us. My husband always makes fun of me when he hears me say that. He says, I sound like a flight attendant, but I really do mean it. It's, uh, it's great uh, to have you with us. And um, I was just thinking as well, when I joined Algonquin 10 years ago, uh, it took me out of my comfort zone. And so if you're feeling out of your comfort zone today, uh, don't worry, it's normal, it's natural, and, uh, and we're here for you. And uh, we're not only here for you today, but uh, every day of your journey with us. And so I'll just encourage you to go to, um, when, you, when you do have a chance or when you do feel you need some help, to go to our website at Algonquin and Student Services and see, like, we're like our own little city. We can help you out. We have so many different services for you. So really take advantage of, of what we have to offer you.
What's great about today too, I've been going to a lot of sessions and we're able to reach a lot more people than we normally can virtually. And so while being vir you know, highly virtual, uh, you know, it has its, some of its drawbacks for sure because we can't physically get together, uh, but we're able to create opportunities. And so I really encourage you to, to continue doing that this year and as many opportunities as you can is connect with us in ways that are meaningful and uh, and uh, I have no doubt you're going to make great connections. So with that, I won't keep you any longer. I will get to the winners. And so I have to say, I was born and raised in Montreal. So I moved here 10 years ago. So Miguel, where are you? Villa de Souvlaki. Oh my God, I love that place. I, I could just eat a whole bunch of, of the souvlaki now and, and, their, and their potatoes and their tzatziki sauce are amazing. So you've got, uh, you've got a gift certificate and Tess, wherever you are, the witchery. I think I pronounced that right, Tess. So haven't heard of that place, but I'm definitely gonna try it out. So there you go. Um, and I'm gonna just be quiet now and hand it back over to the team. Enjoy your time. And I really wanna thank uh, thank the folks from Pure Kitchen for, for joining us and participating. And I'll definitely check out your place as well. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you so much, Laura. And um, I know we connect a lot on campus, so um, it's, it's funny to see our new norm now is on Zoom, but um, I always enjoy these types of events. And congratulations to Miguel and Tess. I will be private messaging each of you in the chat box um, for more details, so look out in the chat section um, there. And now to the main event. I know um, you see two people in the kitchen right now, so I would like to introduce and welcome Tara and Olivia from Pure Kitchen. Olivia is the executive chef and co-owner, while Tara is the Pure Kitchen Community Outreach Chief and Marketing Director. So I hope I got those titles right. <laughs> and um, they will be leading us through one of Pure Kitchen's customers' favorite recipe, the fantastic peanut noodle bowl. And um, Tara will also be sharing the full recipe on Pure Kitchen's Instagram after this event. So if you haven't done so already, follow Pure Kitchen on Instagram, and we'll also put that link there in the chat. So without further ado, um, I know everyone's hungry here, so over to the two of you. Thank you so much, Bonnie and Laura and Michelle and the team. Um, it's so nice to feel so supportive during this. <laughs> so Olivia and I, um, we have a couple questions for you. Uh, Pure Kitchen, if you're newer to Ottawa, or even if you're not in Ottawa, we're a plant-based restaurant. So we have, um, we have four restaurants now that you opened in five and a half years, yeah. and then there's two sister restaurants. And this dish, this peanut noodle bowl, how many have you made, probably? Uh, in the last five and a half years, probably in the tens of thousands? Tens of thousands. Yeah, so easily. It's uh, it is a classic. It's a mainstay dish, and it's so good. So if you have a nut allergy, um, I mean, there's there's many ways that you can sort of work with this in a different way, um, but also it's it's something that you can really modify and customize as you need to. So Bonnie, if you don't mind running the poll questions, um, just to sort of know, we're going to. Start with a question. Have you had tofu before? And as we ask the question, I'm actually going to press this tofu. So we'll get back to this. But <laughs> tofu. Uh, welcome. It sounds like there's some new folk here. Um, I'm actually going to use my pot, which has water, which we'll use for our noodles later to press it. So something just heavy. I have some paper towel on atop it, underneath it, just to soak up some of that extra moisture, because tofu is a vehicle for flavor. So chances are you may have had really crappy tofu before in your life. <laughs> um, and it takes one bad tofu dish to sort of like ruin your belief about what tofu can be. Um, so when you press tofu, just this helps to remove some of the moisture so that hopefully it can take on more of the flavor as you're prepping and cooking it as well. All right, let's see the, uh, let's see the results. Oh, yeah, this is great. I love pools. Oh, nice. Yes, not really my thing. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> oh, and some who've never had it before. Okay, sweet. So 
tofu sort of has like a egg consistency, would you say? Yeah, sort of cooked, a, like, egg, yeah. cooked egg. In yeah, a way. it's very smooth. Uh, almost on the rubbery texture if it's not cooked properly. Yeah. Um, it can really just absorb any flavor that you add to it. So it's actually really, really versatile. And tofu, maybe you've heard about tempeh as well. So this is going to be one of our plant-based proteins in this dish. And peanut sauce will be one of the other sort of plant-based sources of protein that we're using. Tofu is soy milk sort of pressed together like when you make cheese. And tempeh is whole, for, like soybean, like edamame bean, smushed together but fermented. So sometimes if you don't digest tofu really well, tempeh is a really nice uh, option to use. And it does have a bit more like texture and nutty flavor. Yeah, a lot more flavor. A lot more flavor. And it's actually, because of the fermentation, easier to digest and a little bit more protein. So, but tofu is still good, okay? So <laughs> tempeh is just like the overachiever of the soy family here. <laughs> um, second question? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, Bonnie. What's your biggest hindrance to cooking, friends? This way we know sort of where you're at. Some of you may be like, I'm, I, I'm here. <laughs> I'd like to cook more. Some of you may be in the culinary program. I know that we've hired many staff from the culinary program before at Algonquin. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, give that another second. Also, if you are in the culinary program, check out <laughs> what you're doing. Okay, let's see the results. Time. Oh, mm. yeah, speaking my truth here. <laughs> yeah. Money. Inspiration. Okay, this is great. Experience, lack of space or equipment. Yeah, definitely. If you're in res or dorm, you may have a hot plate. Maybe it's going to be ramen noodles with a kettle or something like that. So this is even something that you may be able to adapt a little bit. Yeah, you could probably take your ramen noodles. Like we, we're going to use rice noodles that we're going to cook, but you could use your ramen noodles easily as the substitute. Uh, really, you could use any, any, kind of, yeah. um, any kind of noodle, any rice, rice or quinoa. You could use kale. Yeah. This could be a salad dish or like warm or cold, especially as we go into the fall. You may want a salad or uh, you know some way to get veg vegetables into you <laughs> um but this may be a really nice option for you as well and i also see someone biggest thing is using fresh food before it goes bad so some of the ingredients that we're using today um olivia and i will speak a lot to just like other ways that you can use it so just don't think about cooking as black and white it's very grayscale and a very creative thing once you sort of know the parameters. Okay, last poll. Let's go. How often do you eat plant-based? I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out. Thank you, Bonnie. What do you mean by like plant-based? Like greens and stuff like that? Or a great question. So <laughs> plant-based is a term um, that I've adopted using definitely in Burbage uh, rather than using vegan or vegetarian as uh, sometimes there are preconceived notions or prejudices or biases around being a vegan or being a vegetarian so it means not consuming um, animal products necessarily or maybe more lacto or vegetarian in that way I hope that answers your question it's been grown <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check the results. Okay, all day, every day. Well, this is a really good blended really is. medley. That's awesome. Wait, where am I? You made it. You're in a cooking <laughs> class. Good. Thank you to the person who answered that. I put that there for you. Um, thank you, Bonnie. That's awesome. Caleb, what are we going to do? So um, this is the fantastic bowl. Uh, that doesn't give you much description, um, but in the in the rest, uh, restaurant, it's a peanut noodle dish. So we have a peanut sauce that we always use. We use some rice noodles. 
uh, with a bunch of veggies and some tofu. So we're gonna prepare this for you today and we're gonna provide you some alternatives to the vegetables that we're using just so that you can see how versatile cooking is and how approachable it can be. Even if you don't necessarily have all of these ingredients, if money is a factor for you, then we'll try and provide some alternatives as well that are a little bit on the cheaper side because we know that produce isn't cheap. Yeah, which one day we need to flip that system. Yeah. Um, okay, so first things first, you pressing the tofu. Yeah, get the tofu pressed right away. Uh, it'll take a couple minutes. You wanna draw that water out. And then once that's done, we're gonna make a quick little marinade for that so it can kind of get some nice flavors to it. Um, and then we'll start prepping our veggies uh, for that. And we'll also put our water on once our pot is being finished. You two for one. Yeah, I've used cast iron pans. You can put anything, anything that just gives a little bit of pressure. Uh, maybe you also feel like this, but dishes are also a hindrance. Yes, <laughs> dishes are definitely a hindrance, especially if them. space is something too. Yeah. Um, Should we cut the tofu now? Because uh, yeah, we're let's already do 20 it. minutes in. Woo! Let's go. Okay, so you can sort of see, I'm going to take this uh -huh. off. Liv, you can, um, if you wanted to cut this, I will film it for you here. Okay. So at the restaurant, we normally cut our blocks into 10 slices. It's just really easy for us to do it that way. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can cut it depending on the way that you want to cook it. We're going to pan cook it today. Uh, so I will just cut it into slices. Um, but you can also put it into cubes, um, big ones, small ones. You can cook this in the oven if you want. So I'm just going to slice this up. Um, some people aren't really good at cutting anything into even <laughs> slices. So it could be creative. You can start with the center, do a center cut. And then two, three, four, five. Almost, almost even. As long as they're generally the same size. Uh, when you're cutting your produce and your proteins, you want things to be relatively the same size so that they will cook the same. That's, that's a huge deal. That's big. So then you can see all these slices, and then we're gonna just whip up a really quick marinade um, and throw it on. This isn't the one that we use in the restaurant. Uh, this is just gonna give you an idea of like how easy it is to put a little um, marinade together. Flavor flaves. Now the recipe that we will share on Instagram, it has a maple tamari um, marinade recipe on there, so that'll be nice for you. Okay. So at the restaurant, we use maple syrup a lot um, as an alternative for sugar. It has a lot more micronutrients in it, but if you don't have maple syrup because it is costly, uh, you can definitely just go with sugar. Liquid gold. <laughs> so maple syrup. And that's marked. So that's like an eighth of a cup, a couple of tablespoons. A couple of tablespoons of that. This is tamari. If you never heard of tamari, it's pretty much soy sauce. Um, so if, if soy something is soy sauce is something that you use, you can definitely use that instead. Sometimes tamari can be a little bit more expensive too. So I love going to the international aisle of the, of the grocery stores or um, different specialized food markets as it's, it's great for mm -hmm. prices, I find too. And we're gonna just throw in a little bit of ginger powder. I'm using a fork here, but you know, this is the thing, if you're, work, if you're cooking in a dorm or you just use whatever you have. <laughs> okay, you could use fresh ginger. Really cool thing for fresh ginger is you use the back of a spoon to peel it. Life hack. But careful, it can get in your eyes. And then just grate it on a grater. Uh, this is a little bit of cumin. Uh, cumin's such an amazing spice. We pretty much put it in everything. <laughs> um. Spices are something that can like take a while to build and they can be a little bit more expensive too. So again, the International Isle is really great prices for spices. Ginger can be used in smoothies, in baking, and for savory dishes. So it's like it's got a full spectrum. And then cumin is also so great for lending that flavor a lot, especially for like plant-based cuisine too. Boom. 
So super simple. It'll be salty, it'll be sweet, a little uh, fun with that ginger and cumin in there. Yeah, I mean, I would even add sriracha to this, but we'll add that after. I feel like it's fancy. There's sriracha in the peanut sauce that we're, that we're using. So we're just gonna pour this. You can also put this into a bowl or a deeper dish, but we're just using a plate today because it's what we have yeah. available. So I'm just pouring it over and you might wanna just move some of the pieces around to get them nice and absorbed. And we're not gonna use all of the slices today. Uh, so we'll actually put them away all marinated. So it's perfect for another meal. Time is money, honey. And really, if you're doing any prep work, just make extra and that way you have it ready for you for the next day. That's actually one thing that I do. I'll often like roast a whole squash and, a, and like spend the two hours and then repurpose that throughout the rest of the week. So it may be for one dish and then I just do more and then that way it's like, wow, Tara the past was the name of Tara the future. That's so cool. <laughs> okay. okay, so now what are we gonna, should we just let this think about its life for a few minutes? Yeah, for a couple minutes, we'll just let it marinate. You know, if you have uh, 15, 30 minutes, it's ideal to marinate it longer. Um, but if you're in a hurry, which, you know, oftentimes you are when we're cooking and we're hungry, and um, just give it a couple minutes and just throw it in the pan. And also, my pan takes a little bit of time to heat up. So we're going to turn the pan on now for this. So depending on what kind of cooking surface you have, you might want to start it sooner than later. Okay, sweet, it's good to go. So today we're gonna use an already made peanut sauce that you can buy at the restaurant. Um, has the ingredients on there. So if you wanna mock it up, well, you'll also have the recipe really soon. <laughs> um, but if you don't wanna purchase it, Generally speaking, these are the following ingredients that you'd want to look for having your pantry to make your own. Swapping around here. <laughs> so peanut, peanut butter, key. Do you think you could do this with almond butter or tahini? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Think about that. If that's something that interests you. Um, maple syrup. Yeah. Again, you can use sugar, um, white sugar, brown sugar would be even better if you have it. If you're honey. a maker, honey, okay. stevia. No, I don't use stevia. I mean, if you want to. If you want to, go for it. Play around with it. <laughs> Questionable. Um, this is something that I pretty much always have in my pantry, which is coconut milk. This one is like a thick coconut cream. So I'll often buy this one, which can be a little bit more expensive because if I am entertaining or hosting and there's vegans coming, this is a really nice vegan baking option. It's a bit thicker, uh, but you can get like $1.50 cans. And then I always sort of have this pure creamed coconut um, kicking around in my pantry too, because sometimes I run out of the can or I don't think about it. Um, and this is what it looks like. So it's the coconut pulp with some of that coconut oil up at the top. And you would sort of like chop this and throw it into the pan or add a little bit of liquid and then sort of jimmy rig your own uh, coconut milk, but it lends that really nice flavor too. So, and this is like a dollar 20 in the international aisle. So it's kind of cheap and this is good in curries. It's good in desserts. I just love everything coconut. <laughs> uh, we also use tamari. It's a nice like salty flavor. It has garlic and ginger. Uh, we use fresh in the restaurant, but if you have powder, that works just as well. Just modify uh, the amount so it's slightly less. Um, we use sriracha in the recipe as well, but you can put in red chili flakes, uh, which are super delicious. Um, and uh, we put rice vinegar into the peanut sauce as well, but you can also you just use limes. Just like get a lime cut in half and just use a fork and get that juice out of there. Bring Roll that. it a little bit, yeah. get it flowing. So that's the sauce, pretty straightforward uh, and adaptable for you. Um, 
So let's get some veggies. Yeah, I'll bring back the phone. <laughs> so we use broccoli and red peppers in this dish. Uh, we're just gonna, in, for this case, we, we just have the crown of it. Um, we don't have the stem, but if you were to buy broccoli in the store, you can use the stem for um, making stock, or you can peel it and then grate it and use it for a slaw, or various things like that. So we're just going to cut this up so that we have enough for a couple servings. Just going around the edge and cutting off some pieces. I have a bag in my freezer with broccoli stalks in it to make vegetable stock with later. But also grating the stock for slaw is really, really nice and could even act as like a little garnish or a salad the next day. So we're also minimizing food waste, which has an environmental impact as well. And who said that broccoli stems are bad? Maybe they'll make you a bit more gassy, but you just, you know, as you process things, then it'll work. Maybe TMI during this cooking. <laughs> so there's a bunch of broccoli. Um, you want to wash all your veggies too. Super important. We already did that. It's already washed. So we're just going to put it into a bowl. And I promise she didn't throw it out this bowl. <laughs> Uh, we'll cut up some red peppers next. I might put a couple tofu, or I'm gonna just check the pan over here. And the noodles are definitely ready to plop in here. So we have water boiling. And then one way that you can tell if your oil is, is hot and ready is just to like try the edge of something before putting it all in so it doesn't become oil lock. So this isn't quite ready. I'm using more oil than I normally would just because I want sort of like a crispy sort of feel to it. And you can also use more starch to get like a super yummy crispy turkey. Here's our backs, guys. <laughs> put in a bunch of these noodles into the boiling water, also into the oil. Um, <laughs> just take that out. Cooking's creative. Just shove that in. You can also just soak rice noodles and so they become pretty pliable and you can actually just throw it in the pan. You don't actually have to boil them. Um, like I said earlier, if you don't have rice noodles, you can use spaghetti, ramen noodles, quinoa, rice, whatever your preferred rice kale. is, kale. So lots and lots of options. Pepper. Peppers. Um, there's lots of ways to cut peppers. Uh, and it depends on how sharp your knife is, how good you can cut a pepper normally. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to cut this in half. And we don't need to use a lot, so I'm just going to cut the seeds out. And we're just going to recycle or compost a little bit. If you have, let's say you're cooking in the spring, you can use these seeds from one pepper to start some plants in the early spring indoors as well. That's literally how my pepper plants are growing outside. They're just yeah. some seeds. So you can cut these long, you can cut them uh, widthwise, which I'm just going to do now. If your knife is really dull, which you may not be the case if you're, you know, a student. <laughs> I know my, my I, knives are pretty I just terrible. Thought I wish my knife was that sharp. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> we hear so, you. Normally if you have a sharp knife, you would put the inside of the pepper down and cut it this way. But if you don't have a sharp knife, that's gonna be really hard for you. So just flip it over and put the outside down. And we'll just make little cuts here. And notice how Lily was sort of like curls her fingers over so that if it is dull or sharp and such, she's keeping it with her finger, which is really cool. of the time recommend keeping her fingers. So. And when you're cooking for yourself, you really don't need to prepare a lot of uh, ingredients. It really doesn't take a lot to make a meal. So we'll just add these um, into this bowl with the broccoli. I'm just gonna get these a little stir. And these are actually al dente. And we're gonna finish cooking these off in the peanut sauce. So I'm gonna just turn that off. Liv's gonna strain it. 
you can use your pot to turn it as well. You can see some of that leftover sauce is sizzling from the form, which is telling me we are ready for tofu town. That is the technical term. You can sharpen even really cheap knives. Yes, you can. So there's, I'll show you, I have a really um, cheap knife sharpener. And um, Olivia has like a, a sharpening stick. So there's lots of different ways that you can go about it. So I'm gonna just fill this pan. I'm gonna turn up the heat just a little bit more because this element and all of my elements is a little bit moody. <laughs> um, so this is a knife sharpener coming to the light here. Um, I think I got this at Winners. So in the, in the cooking section, they're really affordable. I don't remember how much it is, but this is sort of something that I purchased, I think when I was like 20 or 21. And um, this is great stocking stuffer idea if that's a part of your life and you're practicing. Um, so yeah, this is a really great addition and this works for me. I don't have a knife sharpening stick, but having a sharp knife, in actually at winners and some sales, it's it really makes a world of a difference for prep. You okay. know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, we're also going to add kale to the dish. Uh, we have two examples of kale. So we get our kale at uh, Pure Kitchen from one of our local farmers. This is some of the kale that actually arrived today at the restaurant. Um, as you can see, it's on a stem. I don't know if any of you, have, if all of you have eaten kale, but um, the stem is something you don't want to include. So we'll show you how to clean that, but we also got some baby kale um, that we're going to use for the uh, recipe as well because it's super tender and delicious. So cute. Just from the local store. Kale is something uh, that's really easy to grow even in like a planter garden as well, depending on what your living situation or if you have a friend who has a yard. It's really nice to sort of grow your own food and take that food seller in you Yeah. So if you're going to be eating uh, kale from a stock, you just want to uh, take the stem in your one hand and then run your hand along the kale and take the stem off. Super easy. Um, someone's full-time job at work. <laughs> it's true, but it's also because we go through an absurd amount of kale. So you'd want to wash that kale and the older the kale is, you really want to like crush it a little bit. Massage, I think that's the term that's yes. often used is massage. So you can massage it, it's not delicate at all and you can chop it up. So I just like to roll up my kale. So we're just bypassing the washing because we're not actually using this for the moment. And then you're just gonna just cut it. Boom. So that okay. took one minute probably, and this could be two to three or four meals or like a part of something. And you just put wash, prep, cut, boom. You yeah. have up to the next few days for salad or sautés and soups. Yeah. So we have two more items to prep. So I'll just move this kale out of the way. Sweet. If you have limited space in this kitchen, so. I'm going to check, you too. <laughs> I'm going to check on our little tofu and also, I don't know what we talked about before. Perfect. Let's just take a look see. Now, flipping something, remember my mom teaching me about French toast. It's like, you may be really anxious for it to work, but be patient um, to get that nice golden rather than flipping and flipping and flipping and flipping. Um, so I'm going to be patient because I want to see that to be a little bit crispier and a little because it'll have that kind of it. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm just cutting up some green onions. This is just something we're going to use as a little garnish. If green onions is not something you enjoy, you do not need to add it. Someone coming with honey substitute kale. Yes, this card is amazing. Holds up. It's two fifty for a giant bunch of it. Often, um, and spinach is also really great. Well, yeah, and also like if you don't want to use broccoli, red peppers, and you don't like them, you can use cucumber. Fresh at the end. 
print again. Uh, carrots are great or cut them up. Um, mushrooms. So this is something that I live with one of my best friends with my housemate. And we'll often share larger, like big things because A, it's cost efficient. But uh, no name, there's like naturally imperfect. Also, a lot of grocery stores will have like a rack at the back of like less than perfect, but they're totally fine. Um, just because food doesn't look like it's meant to be part of a painting session or something <laughs> like that. So this I think was two forty eight, while the other smaller packets were like $3 or something. Good deal. And then the last garnish we're just gonna prepare is cilantro. And we know this isn't everyone's favorite. Some people have um, aversions, aversions <laughs> and it tastes like soap to them. So obviously avoid. Um, generally in North America and in, in French culinary cooking, they de-stem all the cilantro, don't do it. but you don't need to. I'll take off some of the bigger stems, but the stem has a lot of flavor and you're really just looking to uh, make sure there's no bad pieces because cilantro does go bad pretty quickly and if you don't want to use cilantro because it does go bad quickly you can just add coriander to uh the sauce i mean it's it's the uh spice version it's nice as a garnish because those people who have an aversion to it um can opt to have it same thing with green onion there's a lot of like onion dislikes or cilantro dislikes or the flip side they love. So you're giving yourself that creativity. Um, so you just want to roll this kind of like into a little bundle. Don't mush it too much. And then you're just going to slice it just once. You can, you can keep chopping it, but you don't need to. Boom. And that's the garnish. Okay, shall we cook? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay. Uh, peanut sauce. Peanut sauce. There we go. It's been. Also, sometimes with like this sauce has coconut oil in it or coconut milk. So sometimes if you take it right out of the fridge, then it's going to be like a little bit more thick. And that's nice and hot. It also has sugar in it too. Um, I'm going to flip. I'm gonna just throw the uh, red peppers and broccoli in here and get them going. You can blanch off the broccoli in your noodle water as well, which I kind of forgot, but it doesn't take too much. I really prefer my vegetables on the crunchier end. If that's not the case for you, you don't need to put them in raw. Who else has a grandmother that would cook the green vegetables till they were yellow? <laughs> growing up. There were so many vegetables that I didn't like growing up because I found that my family, um, you know, they, they, they weren't, there was more to them. They just weren't cooking it properly. Um, okay, so I just flipped the tofu. Maybe you had a nice little golden color to it. You definitely get a little, some to dry off some extra oil. This is also something that you could bake if you have time. If you have an oven, even toast your oven. Uh, so I probably put it at like 375, 350, slow and low for a little bit longer. And you could, if you do like it crispy, you could boil it up. Already this is working. Oh, hi ladies, sorry, Bonnie here. Um, the sizzling, the sizzling sounds delicious, but you might just have to speak up a little bit over the sizzling. Oh, sure, sorry, friends. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're adding in the noodles. We add a little bit more peanut sauce. And what's the sort of visual cue for the how much sauce to add or how much liquid? Is this volume okay now, Bonnie? Am I speaking loud enough? Just okay. maybe a tad, a tad, because um, the, the walk sound is quite um, amazing, but you might just have to speak up a little bit over it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I like everything really saucy. Um, so I'll always put way more sauce on everything um, than maybe other people prefer, uh, but that's just the way I like it. You can just gauge it. Um, 
how you prefer it, but you want a nice coating on all your noodles and your and your veggies. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more into that because I'm like that, I'm saucy. Let's say you can also use, like last night I actually made a noodle dish. I added a little bit of vegetable stock that I had too, like just a wee little bit, and that'll help stretch and steam the noodles and the vegetables too. Yeah. Um, I was talking about the tofu and how you could bake it as well instead of frying it. Um, baking would just take a little bit more time. You could do it in the toaster oven as well. And that would work. Oh, looking. Looking really good. Uh, we're almost done. You can see that if I pick up the noodles, there's still a lot of sauce under there. The longer and hotter you cook this, the, the sauce will actually um, thicken and stick to the noodles. Um, and like coat them really, really nicely. Uh, so I'm in a kitchen I'm not super used to. I'm not quite sure how quickly the, the element works. So just, just going along here and making sure that it cooks well. But you can see so much, it's very, very saucy. This is about good. And then sub the peanut sauce with wow butter. I bet you that would be delicious. Yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna throw the uh, kale right into this dish as well. We this is the baby kale that we have here, and you can put in as much as you like. Greens will always cook down quite a bit, so you'll start with a larger amount, and then it will shrivel up pretty good in the heat. So start with a bit, and then you can keep adding. Now Olivia and I do like. Um, if you're someone who maybe doesn't like chewy and soft textures together, you like these smaller stems will start to break down a little bit. Um, but you could also trim them and just do greens or spinach if you are someone who doesn't do well with kale. Um, and I always keep my kale stems and put them in my stock bag. But you could also make like cut them really, really, really thin. And I'm like showing you this. Cut them really, really, really thin and even make like a slaughter sauce with those as well. Same with your Swiss chard ends. I always use those. Looking okay, good. I'm gonna keep the oil going here and fry off the rest. Yeah, I'm gonna take this. This is pretty much good. I mean, I could definitely add more kale to this, but this is pretty good just to show you how to do it. So I'm gonna bring this over to our bowls. Woo! I'm gonna grab you a hot pot. Whee! Don't mind my incredible videography skills here. <laughs> okay. I like watching Olivia with tongs and noodles. <laughs> yeah. She does like a little swirly gig thing. That's the technical term. Once again, <laughs> we're here to teach you technicality. And the great thing, you know, with, with any of these meals is you can just make so much and then you have leftovers for the next couple of days. Who doesn't like leftovers? So rice noodles, sometimes the next day, you, you might even want to refry them um, in the pan. Um, <laughs> that's where using grains or greens, um, they're really great left over the next day too. So rice noodles can be a little bit finicky if you were to like doing three to four days worth, you would sort of maybe do two days, but not much more than that with meal prepping and planning. Your taste buds happy. Oh shit, I'm excited. Coming together here. Sorry, I'm swearing. And put that back over here. So we're gonna garnish this with the green onions, the cilantro, and then we also have some chopped up peanuts here. If you have trail mix, sunflower mm -hmm. seeds. Um, oh, I also have sesame seeds too. That's a really nice garnish. Toasted pumpkins, really nice. Ooh. So it adds a nice crunch. Yeah, if you have a nut allergy and seeds are okay, or other types of, uh, like if, if it's just tree nuts, um, you can definitely play around a little bit with the, with the flavors and the spices too. 
And then we've got our beautiful Ooh, yeah. barley tofu. <laughs> but it look it smells so good. Yeah, if you if you're trying to have less oil in your diet, absolutely go the baked route. Um, you'll have way less. <laughs> so I'm just stacking these in a little stack of pork, and then I'm just gonna cut them on a diagonal. That. And then you just take it. Chicken. And there we go. Dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna turn off my fancy my fancy second camera here. Um and this, I know when Libby and I are both probably like, oh, this kitchen space are normally very clean cooks as we go. So that is a little peanut noodle bowl. So we gabbed away there, but honestly, I think that like the most time consuming part of this is probably making the sauce or letting the tofu marinate, Yeah, which you can buy, like you can just do super, you can simplify that portion of the dish. Okay. Um, crispy tofu is also really, really nice as well to use. Um, and, or you could use like, I've used mushrooms, I've used tempeh, I've used cauliflower even as like the, the meat replacement, but you don't need to replace meat per se for every single meal. You know, you're getting your macro micronutrients through the day. Um, yeah, the sauce and then cutting veg. You could have cut the whole kale and red pepper and you would have had enough veg for like two to three, if not four meals. Absolutely. Go. And yeah. you did that in like 10 minutes. Um, the hardest part when you're learning how to cook is always the timing. Yeah. What do you start with? How do you make sure that when you're done, everything's done at the same time? I know that was one of my barriers when I started cooking. I mean, I was pretty young then. I was about 12 when I was regularly cooking for my family. Um, <laughs> start young you get lots of uh, practice um so it's just about trying it out getting the rhythm and then you know it'll all come together in the end and red pepper and kale and broccoli they all sort of cook around the same time to get like a nice al dente flavor versus like a mushroom which you probably want to put in with onion or garlic or gingers because it takes a bit more time to break down so yeah i start to find those things so what questions um, do you have? So I see someone's asking about what type of tofu. So we use an extra firm tofu. Um, we actually use a product by Le Soyerie. It's a local company out of Gatineau. You can buy it at Herb and Spice, but you don't need to buy that one specifically. As long as it's a firm tofu for this style, it will work really, really well. Whenever I buy groceries, I always buy some sort of protein. So a lot of times I'll buy like frozen ones too. So like this one, um, this one I really like because it's sprouted. So it makes it a little bit easier to break down, but it's about a dollar more than that one. And sometimes I don't use it all at once. So I keep a little bit of liquid and just have it to go. So it's really nice to have if you're like, what am I going to eat? And you at least have that protein configured. Is there any other questions? Um, I see someone's looking for the recipe that's not linked to Instagram. Is there another way that we can get this to people? Yeah, so it's on our website, under the blog section of our website, in the fantastic bowl recipe for two. It doesn't include the peanut sauce recipe. Um, however, Minimalist Baker, check out Minimalist Baker. Minimalist in the way that it's really her mandate to create really accessible, healthy, wholesome recipes uh, with minimal ingredients. So she has a really good peanut sauce recipe. Um, Love and Lemons does too. Uh, but we do have the maple tamari marinade recipe um, on there as well with it. So on the blog section, purekitchenottawa.com. So someone's asking about how to make things look really pretty. I mean, Unless you're presenting it for other people, as long as it tastes good is the most important part. But uh, the pleating, you know, you can take cues from 
so many blogs that are out there uh, and websites and other things that demonstrate that uh, it's just something that you learn over time. Um, Go to art galleries, look at other people's blogs and Instagrams and yeah. hashtags and yeah, make it your own. Uh, what oil did you end up using for the tofu? Was that just olive oil? That was olive. Grapeseed oil is a really good oil for like higher frying or sunflower canola as well. Yeah, olive oil is better for uh, raw. It doesn't heat as well, but you can still use it. Yeah. Um, sunflower oil, it's super cheap. Um, whenever I make rice noodles, they stick together in clumps. Yes, I don't know if you noticed when I was starting to put the bowl together in the pan, but uh, because I had just um, strained the noodles and left them in a strainer, they're actually in a big clump. <laughs> so I ran them under water and it loosens them up. If uh, that's one good way to keep them separated. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, you can actually soak the noodles versus uh, boiling them. And I find that that prevents them from clumping at that point. Um, you can also just toss them in a little bit of oil. It could just be uh, just a plain oil, like a sunflower or something, um, or even a sesame oil, if that's something that you have. Uh, that works really, really well. Um, I do think the tahini would be a really good option for those with peanut allergies. I know that there are quite a few about that. Yeah, and the wow butter too. Yeah. I think. Yes, yes. I was just, I was just asking because I really want to make this for my family, but my brother's allergic, and I don't want to kill him. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, don't. It's, yeah, it's always so cool when you don't kill your family that you cook for them. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I was asking because I'd love to make this, but again, my brother's allergic. Yeah, try to put tahini or the wow butter. Absolutely, I don't see why it wouldn't work. Uh, they both have really good flavors and would be balanced by the rest of the ingredients. Yeah, I think so too. And like tahini is a little bit more viscous than peanut butter a lot of the time. So, but it doesn't have any peanuts. Yeah, exactly. It's sesam sesame oh, okay. Tahini is sesame. So, okay. um, yeah, you could totally do that and then garnish with the sesame on top, and that would be delicious. But Tahini, it's not as thick as peanut butter. So just know that you may need to adapt the like the viscosity or like the liquid content a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's all I wanted to ask. Of course. Thanks for asking. Enjoy making your making it for your family. <laughs> killing your brother. Yeah. Instead of killing my brother, exactly. <laughs> um any other yeah. any other questions? And it doesn't even have to be about if if uh, I'm not sure how many people are new to Ottawa, um, but if you are in Ottawa, and hey to those who are not in Ottawa but are still um, tuning in, um, if you have any questions about the city, if you have any questions about business, as I'm sure some of you are also going into um, studies about about business. So Olivia is in the hospitality hey. industry. Yeah. yeah. Um. We got five more minutes for questions, of, or you can just ask like Olivia, why are you so fast at chopping? <laughs> hey everyone, Bonnie here. Um, that was great. I'll just give um, people a few more minutes to put in any questions there. And um, I do see Hannah has also put in the um, website link for Pure Kitchen. So for those asking um, for the recipe not on Instagram, Hannah has put in that um, website link there for us. And um, one question just came in. Are you guys the head chefs at Pure Kitchen? She is. I am. <laughs> She's co-owner and head chef and I get to play, or I do their marketing, and Olivia and I have done many fun hearing events together, so I get to be like, I'll help you with these ideas, while she's being the queen behind the yeah. scenes. I don't normally come out and do these events, so this is fun for me. <laughs> yeah. It was literally, poor Michelle, was like, I was like, oh, she's going to try to make it, so I'm so <laughs> happy. Um, you're very lucky to have her here tonight. Couple uh, quick questions here. Uh, easiest way to peel garlic? Um, I don't have a garlic clove with me, but normally the easiest way is to take a single clove or if you have multiple cloves. And while we do have a lot of stuff on this cutting board, I can demonstrate for you the easiest way. Let's see. So clove of garlic. Um, 
I normally just cut the end off where it attaches to the bulb. And then I take the knife flat and just smash it. Just like you see all those fancy chefs do. And it's really the easiest way to peel it. Um, what's been the biggest challenge to running a business? <laughs> yeah. That's a loaded question. <laughs> I don't know if I'll answer that. Um, <laughs> The restaurant industry is very hard. If you're planning on going into it, just be going into it with your eyes open about the long days, the toll it'll take on your body, running a business, it depends, you know, the business, but if you wanted to get off the ground, expect that first couple of years to be a lot. You're going to be married to it. Yeah. And hopefully if you have a partner, do it with your partner if you get along really well or else doesn't always turn out well yeah from what I've heard um and you know, and one of the co-owners so there's six owners in the restaurant but Olivia's husband is also one of the amazing co-owners and there's also a couple others there too so they're a good <laughs> dynamic duo <laughs> um how do you chop I mean without your eyes burning uh, <laughs> I wear contacts uh just in my daily life and they're just like little eye shields so it's harder for me to answer this question. I've tried that. I've tried that. They still burn. Really? <laughs> so one thing that I do, also how old your onion is, sometimes it's a little bit sassier, the older or softer that it becomes. Um, one thing that I once learned was that right after you, you prep it, and you, know, you, you wouldn't take your time per se prepping it, um, then you wash your knife and your cutting board with cold water. And that like, that's, I don't know if, if that's just a placebo effect for me, but I've noticed that that helps me too. And refrigerate them. Yeah. I know cold water, running cold water helps. Yeah. So it traps the molecules that the onion gives off. Yeah. Yeah. The, the onion breathes moistly. <laughs> yeah. um, someone's asking about where we go shopping uh, to find these ingredients. Um, I mean, I, I shop at Superstore a lot because it's close to me and it has an international section. But it is really pricey. Food Basics is awesome for cost efficiency to stretch your budget. And Chinatown. And Chinatown. Like Kowloon or Manfong yeah. are great little grocery stores and they have a lot of the ingredients that you're looking for as well. And they're one of those things that like, let's say you wanted sesame oil or you want like mirin or some sort of rice vinegar, maybe a higher ticket purchase, like more than $5, but sometimes it is less than $5. But it's something that's like an investment. So in the same way that like you buy your statement pieces for your wardrobe and maybe you get basics that are a little bit cheaper, you think about your pantry and your food that same way too. And split it with roommates or friends so it becomes more cost efficient. And we're almost out of time. I'll just answer one more. Uh, what tips do you have for experimenting with cooking? I recommend if you want to try a new recipe, I mean, there's so many places to find recipes these days, but give yourself three chances at a recipe. Yeah. Sometimes the first time it doesn't work. By the third time you'll get, you'll get it. Just be patient with yourself. Enjoy the process. Snack along the way. Have some friends over. Make it fun. If it doesn't turn out the first time, like I sometimes make stuff at home and it doesn't turn out. <laughs> Like, what am I making? Because I only have, you know, a couple of items in my fridge because I am hardly ever home. And it's like, oh, that's gross. Yeah. But then you can try it again. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, I'm going to, as soon as we end here, I'm going to link the recipe to the blog. Um, I would really love, I don't, oh, actually, maybe we don't have, um, I was going to take a photo of, like, everyone, but I don't have the permission to do that. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, just stay in touch and you can follow Chef Olivia Pure Kitchen on Instagram or Pure Kitchen Ottawa on Instagram. And um, I'll share that and please come by anytime. We do have a student discount. I'm trying to remember what it is. It's Toronto. We have a student discount. I will find that <laughs> out and I will also post information about that. So it's uh, weekdays. Thanks, perfect. Yeah, thanks yeah. for our 
Thank you so much, Tara and Olivia. This was awesome. I'm sure all of us are super hungry right now. And thanks for all those fun little tips. I definitely learned some um, new things there that I'll be testing out. Maybe not today because I actually overlook um, Pure Kitchen on Elgin Street. I might walk <laughs> over there yeah. after this session. <laughs> so thank you again. And thank you to all of our students who have tuned in. Um, happy AC Day 1 to everyone. And um, this was a great kickoff to the start of the fall term. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. If you want to rewatch um, the session with Tara and Olivia, it, this recording will be hosted on the Algonquin College Orientation website. And I've just put the link there below for you. So feel free to rewind a little bit if you want to um, take a stab at this recipe a little bit later. So thank you so much, Tara and Olivia, for joining us. And thank you to all of our students. All the best on this new semester. You're going to be great. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, everyone. And I'll keep the portal of this meeting open for a minute or so to allow everyone to start logging off. So have a great evening, everyone. Bye. Bye.